Welcome to the Sleep Baby Safely training. Today, we will examine the facts and data related to infant sleep-related deaths in Pinellas County, learn the best way to sleep baby safely and the science behind these safety tips, discuss the role of first responders and strategies for offering direct on-scene education to promote safe sleep for babies so they can reach their first birthdays. In 2015, the Pinellas Preventable Child Death Planning Team embarked on a regional campaign to address the three leading causes of preventable death for children under six. These were infant sleep-related deaths, drowning, and inflicted head trauma. These deaths are non-natural and therefore preventable, as opposed to natural deaths due to congenital causes, birth defects, and so on. In 2017, during the second year of the campaign, data from the District 6 Medical Examiner's Office showed that the number of deaths for young children due to drowning and inflicted head trauma, remained fairly constant. However, sleep-related infant deaths in Pinellas County continue to rise and are the number one cause of preventable death for children under 18. In fact, the medical examiner's office verified that during a 10-year period, a total of 102 babies in Pinellas County died from sleep-related suffocation. To put that number into perspective, that's nearly six empty kindergarten classrooms of children. One of the first tasks of the planning team was to perform an analysis of the data for infant sleep-related deaths from 2011 through 2017. As you can see from the chart, the number of infant sleep-related deaths in Pinellas County steadily rose during this time. The data analysis was performed by the District 6 Medical Examiner's Office, Juvenile Welfare Board, and Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. When we held the birth and death rates constant, Caucasian infants accounted for 57% of all sleep-related deaths, as compared to a 74% birth rate. African-American infants accounted for 44% of all sleep-related deaths, but their birth rate was much lower at 17%. This means that sleep-related suffocation deaths were nearly three and a half times more prevalent among African-American babies. So we knew we needed to do more to educate and engage this population. We also found that these deaths occurred within the first eight months of a child's life, which confirmed that our safety efforts needed to focus on baby's first year of life. In addition, the majority of the babies who died were bottle-fed. This supported our need to co-promote breastfeeding whenever possible because it's best for babies when done safely. We also looked at where the deaths were happening in our county, and here is what we found. The majority occurred in Mid and South Pinellas County, with 80% taking place south of State Road 60. And over half the deaths occurred within one of Pinellas County's five high-risk zones. You'll see these outlined in black on the map. Since JWB's neighborhood family centers are located in these areas, we knew these were another set of partners we needed to engage. We then examined where in the home the infant was found deceased. 66% occurred in an adult bed, either from co-sleeping with a parent or from an infant being laid down to sleep in an adult bed. This data further supported one of our main campaign messages. More infants die in adult beds than anywhere else. 20% occurred in a crib, bassinet, or pack and play, either from items in the crib that caused the baby to suffocate or from the sleep position of the baby, face down on its stomach during sleep. 
14% occurred on an unapproved sleep surface, such as a sofa, recliner, futon, air mattress, or waterbed. This data was both alarming and eye-opening. We knew we needed to use what we learned from the data to create a local campaign that targets infant safe sleep. We also knew that our county had no consistent set of educational materials, nor was it a consistent message about infant safe sleep being given to parents and caregivers. The Sleep Baby Safely campaign was created and features local data from infant deaths that occurred within Pinellas County, consistent messaging and undeniable facts based on this data, practical and easy to remember safe sleep tips, and a coordinated set of educational materials used among all partners. Sleep Baby Safely campaign is based on several facts, again, all of which are supported by data. The first fact is sobering but true. Every month in Pinellas County, a healthy baby suffocates while sleeping unsafely. This is an average based on the upward rise of deaths in recent years. From the data, we know that suffocation from infant unsafe sleep is the number one cause of preventable child death for children under 18. In fact, Nearly as many children die from sleep-related suffocation in their first year of life as die in the next 17 years from all other preventable causes combined. This includes drownings, car accidents, hot cars, gunshot wounds, suicide, and so on. Another key fact of the campaign, the cause of death is suffocation not SIDS. In the past, SIDS, or Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, was the cause or name given when an infant was found lifeless during sleep. SIDS denotes the cause of death is unknown or a mystery, and it denotes that all other causes have been ruled out. SIDS is also blameless. So many times it was easier for a coroner or medical examiner to share the news of an infant death with a family. However, for healthy babies who have died from sleep-related causes, the District 6 medical examiner has not determined a single cause of death as SIDS in 20 years. That's because when a healthy baby dies a sleep-related death, the Emmy's office uses findings from the autopsy, toxicology, and investigative reenactment to determine the cause of death, which is ruled suffocation, asphyxiation, or overlay from co-sleeping. When we know and understand the cause of death is suffocation, not SIDS, we can remove the mystery and educate and empower parents and caregivers to sleep their babies safely. This single fact, the cause of death is suffocation, not SIDS, is the foundation of the Sleep Baby Safely campaign. It is based on local data and facts, and it unites all campaign partners around a common message. The next fact, which we discussed earlier, more infants die in adult beds than anywhere else. From the data, we know that two-thirds of infant sleep-related deaths happen when parents shared a bed with their baby, also known as co-sleeping. In fact, infants are 40 times more likely to die in adult beds than in their own cribs. And the risks go up when adults smoke, take medications, use drug or alcohol, or are obese. Another fact. What's comfy for adults can be deadly for babies. Things that adults find comfy for sleeping, such as pillow top mattresses, memory foam, down comforters, and pillows can cause babies to suffocate. That's why we stress never to co-sleep with a baby or lay them down to sleep on an adult bed or other soft surface. We also stress keeping baby's crib, bassinet, and pack-and-play empty. 
That means no blankets, quilts, teddy bears, toys, or bumper pads during bedtime and nap time. Use nothing in their crib but a firm mattress and tight-fitting sheet. Another proven fact, sleeping babies on their back is safest. In 1992, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommended babies sleep on their backs or sides to reduce the risk of sleep-related deaths. In 1996, the Academy revised their recommendation to say only sleeping babies on their back was safe, and they launched their Back to Sleep campaign. Just this one change in a baby's sleep position, from belly to back, reduced sleep-related deaths by over 50%. Many worry that their baby will choke while sleeping on its back. So, it's important that we dispel the myth by explaining how a baby's anatomy and gag reflex actually prevents this. In the diagram on the left, you see a baby sleeping on its back. When babies sleep on their backs, the trachea or windpipe lies on top of the esophagus. When a baby spits up, Gravity in the esophagus prevents it from getting into the trachea, so baby does not choke. In the diagram on the right, you see a baby sleeping on its belly. When babies sleep on their stomachs, saliva or vomit can more easily go from the esophagus to the trachea due to gravity, and this causes babies to choke. Due to the human anatomy, babies who sleep on their backs are less likely to choke. In addition, babies who sleep on their backs are far less likely to have their airways blocked and suffocate during sleep. Another fact we stress, the first year of a baby's life is critical. Sleep-related suffocation deaths generally happen in baby's first year, most within the first eight months as supported by our data. At birth, babies have heavy heads and weak neck muscles. This makes it difficult for them to lift their heads to breathe freely if their airways are blocked. While babies develop differently, most can lift their heads around four months, and by five or six months, they have mastered head control and can roll over in both directions thanks to stronger neck and arm muscles. Because some babies are born premature, and because every baby develops differently, the Sleep Baby Safely campaign focuses on baby's first year. And we celebrate when babies reach their first birthday milestone. The final fact that we want to share is one that is foundational to our campaign. And it's one that we emphasize over and over in our messaging. We know more today than we ever have. Generational and cultural myths are difficult to address as are trends. Even the American Academy of Pediatrics has changed its position over time when it comes to safe sleep. Add to this confusing or false information shared on the internet and social media, and retailers selling unproven and sometimes dangerous devices for babies, you can see why parents and caregivers may be confused. Unfortunately, some parents still believe they can safely co-sleep with their babies. They think these deaths only happen when a person uses drugs or alcohol. Perhaps they practice unsafe sleep habits with their older children who survived, so they think it's okay to do the same with their newborn child. Or maybe their own parents co-slept with them or slept them in an unsafe place or position on their bellies. To all of these, we respond by saying, we know more today than we used to. As more information becomes available, we must change old practices and beliefs to keep babies safe while sleeping. For example, we changed our habits about car seats for infants and young children. Today, we know that car seats are proven lifesavers, and most parents would never risk driving their baby around without being properly restrained in a car seat, 
even if they've never had an accident. Using the same logic, why would anyone risk sleeping a baby in an unsafe place or position at night or nap time? Even one time sleeping a baby unsafely can be deadly. We must make the practice of safe sleep for babies as common as car seats. Now that you understand the facts and messaging of the campaign, we want to share with you three practical and easy to remember safe sleep tips for babies that all parents and caregivers should practice. The first tip is follow safe sleep ABCs, alone, back, crib. Always put babies to sleep alone, on their backs, in an empty crib, bassinet, or pack and play. Remove all items from the crib to include blankets, pillows, stuffed animals, and bumper pads. Use only a firm mattress with tight-fitting sheet in the crib. And use a one-piece sleeper or sleep sack instead of loose blankets to keep baby warm. The second tip is share a room, not a bed. This is critical since most sleep-related deaths happen while babies co-sleep with adults. Room sharing offers the benefit of having baby close by parents without the risks associated with co-sleeping. Our tip is to bring the crib into parents' room for baby's first year. And never lay a baby down to sleep on soft surfaces like adult beds, couches, futons, recliners, or air mattresses. This means for bedtime and for naps. The third tip is stay alert while feeding. This is important because many deaths happen when parents are tired and fall asleep while feeding their babies in adult beds, recliners, couches, and so on. Our safety tip is to set an alarm and always return baby to crib after feeding and to keep two feet on the floor while feeding baby to avoid falling asleep. We also encourage breastfeeding when possible because it is best for baby. And we discourage smoking around baby or the misuse of alcohol or drugs by parents and caregivers. At this time, we're going to review what you have learned with a simple exercise called Do This, Not That. For each slide, think to yourself which picture represents safe sleep and which one shows unsafe sleep and why. We'll give you a few seconds for each scenario before we tell you the answer. Starting now. The image on the left is safest, alone, back, crib. In the one on the right, the blanket and teddy bear pose suffocation risks. The picture on the right is safest, baby being placed in an empty crib to sleep. The one on the left shows a parent co-sleeping. In this image, the baby is 40 times more likely to suffocate during sleep. The picture on the left is correct, showing a baby sleeping on its back, while the one on the right is unsafe because baby is sleeping face down on its stomach. Again, it's the picture on the left that depicts baby sleeping safely in an empty crib. In the one on the right, baby is surrounded by multiple suffocation risks, bumper pads, pillows, and blankets. The safe one should be easy to spot. It's the picture on the right. In the one on the left, nearly everything is unsafe in the picture. There are several items in baby's crib and baby is sleeping face down on the mattress. The correct image is the one on the left. Share a room, not a bed. 
In the one on the right, the soft adult mattress, comforters, pillows, and the parents themselves all pose grave suffocation risks. The safest scenario is the one on the right. Stay alert while feeding baby. Two feet on the floor, sitting upright. In the image on the left, mom is feeding baby in bed. She appears exhausted and her partner is already asleep. Now let's discuss your role in providing direct on-scene education. You play a vital role in saving babies' lives and preventing sleep-related deaths. First, whenever you are on a call, look for signs of a baby in the home. If you are out in the community, look for other opportunities to share the safe sleep message. Next, strike up a conversation. Ask whether a baby lives in the home or is visiting. Ask where the baby sleeps. If appropriate, ask to see where the baby sleeps. Remember, babies should sleep in their own crib, bassinet, or pack and play, never in an adult bed or on an air mattress or other unapproved sleep surface. The crib, bassinet, or pack and play should be empty. No blankets, stuffed animals, pillows, or bumper pads. And there should only be a firm mattress with a tight-fitting sheet. Also, ask how the baby sleeps. Babies should sleep on their backs, not on their stomachs or propped up on their sides. Then, share the materials in your Sleep Baby Safely First Responder Kit. Go over the safe sleep checklist with the parent or caregiver, reviewing each safety tip. Give them the checklist and a safe sleep door hanger to reinforce safety tips. If someone does not have a safe place for their baby to sleep, give them the Beds for Babies postcard. Healthy Start Coalition offers free pack and plays, so all babies have a safe place to sleep. Ask if you can call or text the number for them to ensure they follow through. As part of this training, we've created a handout featuring several conversation starters to give you some ideas on how to start a conversation around safe sleep while out on calls or in the community. We also encourage you to visit our website, sleepbabysafely.com. Here you'll find all of our key messaging, facts and tips, plus a partner toolkit. The website also features a place where parents and caregivers can take a safe sleep pledge. When you are providing direct on-scene education with a parent or caregiver, ask them to go to the website and take this life-saving pledge. And let them know they will receive a free gift for doing this. On the website's homepage, you will also find our Sleep Baby Safely PSA a collaboration between St. Petersburg Fire Rescue and the Juvenile Welfare Board. In a minute, you'll see the PSA which signifies the end of this training. We appreciate your time and attention. You play a critical role in saving babies' lives and preventing sleep-related deaths. And we sincerely thank you for helping ensure all Pinellas County babies are able to celebrate their first birthdays. Every month in Pinellas County, a healthy baby dies while sleeping unsafely. The cause of death is suffocation, usually from sleeping with a parent or somewhere else unsafe. Don't risk it. Don't let this happen to you. The safest way for babies to sleep is alone on their back in an empty crib. Learn more at sleepbabysafely.com.